as you know, the platform was formed to give you real news, to get rid of the bias, to get rid of the wokeness, to get rid of the PC that has dominated and infected the fourth estate in New Zealand for many, many years now. And little wonder we have got problems with our media. Uh, when we look at the sort of people who are teaching young people journalism and what they are saying. This week I came across, in a completely proper and unbad way, I came across an article in Newsroom. Newsroom, uh, run by a former editor of The Herald, Tim Murphy, and a former editor of TV3, uh, Mark Jennings. And Newsroom actually does some pretty good work. It's not the worst of the woke media newsroom. It does have um, a dodgy deal with universities around the country that allows left-wing pill-clutching academics to print any rubbish sort of rubbish they want. Um, and it does employ this uh, self-styled Nazi hunter, Mark Dulder, who's constantly going around finding white supremacists and losing his lunch over it. Um, and whilst News Hub also has some excellent correspondence and does some excellent work, it also occasionally publishes absolute todge. And uh, one piece that I take issue with and I'm going to examine this morning was a piece by Dr Greg Treadwell. Dr Greg Treadwell is a senior lecturer in communication studies at AUT, the Auckland University of Technology. And Greg Treadwell, Dr Greg Treadwell, who presumably is moulding the minds of young journalists or putative journalists and teaching them how to go and do their job, Greg Treble wrote the most remarkable piece called Fire, uh, Fury Under Fire, Anti-Vax Complaints Loom Over Documentary. And he pointed out that the New Zealand Media Council, which I am thankful the platform is not a member of, um, it's the self-governing industry body uh, for news media, there are a whole lot of complaints about Paula Penfold's woefully inadequate and biased Fire and Fury documentary. A whole raft of complaints have been received by the uh, Press Council, and the Press Council is going to sit in judgment on Fire and Fury. As you know from listening to this program, the problem with Fire and Fury was, like Willie Jackson's tweaks to democracy, they have tweaked journalism. And Paula Penfold who um, basically ran me down all over the place but didn't have the guts to appear on this program. Um, Paula Penfold said they didn't need to give um, people they were bagging in that documentary a specific right of reply. They'd had enough to say. So Greg Treadwell, Dr Greg Treadwell, who teaches young people journalism, believe it or not, or communications, he writes this column which basically says he hopes that the Media Council doesn't find, doesn't find against fire and fury because he thinks not pe giving people a right of reply is the right thing to do in the new, scary, politically world, uh, correct world we live in. Um, Sean, he says, the absence of a right of reply in the investigative <coughs> documentary will no doubt catalyse allegations that the principle which insists on accuracy, fairness and balance has been ignored. Complainants are likely to ask the council to rule a piece of journalist cannot be accurate, fair and balanced if it silences those who are the subject of its allegations. And then he says this, this stunning, stunning sentence, such a finding, despite any immediate logic to it, would be simply unthinkable. So he says it is unthinkable that the media council would uphold the principle of balance and fairness. This guy's a journalism lecturer, remember. He said it would allow purveyors of disinformation, so he's bought in completely to that, to cast themselves even further as victims of the mainstream media and perhaps even force stuff to provide a platform for their mistruths and conspiracies. So Greg Treble is not even, he's decided, he's sat in judgment. Uh, it would op open the gate to wider proto-fascist movements seeking to pollute our public sphere and thereby wound our democracy, says Greg Treble. And Ben sitting there shaking his head and Kelly sitting there shaking their head. It is dangerous shite what he is saying. It is like the Prime Minister's speech at the United Nations. And that we have a lecturer in journalism and communications advocating the suppression of free speech 
and the abandonment of balance by our news media is deeply, deeply disturbing. Now, in the interest of me doing my job well and sticking by my journalistic ethics, we approached Greg Treadwell to appear on the programme this morning before we ripped him a new one. Right, Ben rang him, tried emails and everything. He wasn't really playing ball. So yesterday I thought, time to haul out the big guns. Give me his number, Ben. Um, I rang him a couple of times, didn't pick up. Then it just said, please text me. I said, Greg, Sean Plunkett here. We'd very much like to have you on the platform to discuss your newsroom column. No thanks, Sean. Fine. I go back. Why not? Too busy. Too busy poisoning young minds. Um, it would take 10 minutes, I said. No, really, too busy. Well, just to clarify then, I say, your article in Newsroom was part of a paid-for editorial arrangement, correct? Nothing for a while. Hello, are you there? Nothing back. No, no, I submitted it without being asked and they accepted it. No payment involved. Please stop texting. Please stop texting, says Greg. Well, Greg, you're right. A column, in a, and it's published publicly, Greg, expect people to engage, right? Um, and then I said, but there is an arrangement with newsroom and tertiary institutions, including yours, that academics get to have columns published as part of a sponsorship deal. I want to clarify if your piece is part of that. Also, as a journalist, who is, it's actually my job to ask questions about issues in the public space such as those you have raised in your column. Can I presume that your desire for me to stop texting means you don't want to dialogue or discourse about your column? And then Greg comes back. If there is such an arrangement, that's the sponsorship deal, I wasn't aware of it. My opinion piece was just that, an offering of an opinion which they agreed to publish. The views I have on such issues are in the column, says Greg. I give him a thumbs up, little emoji thumbs up, right? And then I said, but did you submit the column to anyone else? Or was it like a deal with the newsroom? No, he says, it's bad form to submit something to multiple editors, is it? Not if you're trying to flog the rubbish that you write. Um, newsroom previously published something I submitted on journalism, so I thought of them first, and they said, yes, seriously, it's that simple. And I finished with a great, great. So that took him at least 10 minutes. And that took him at least 10 minutes. He could be on the show now trying to make a cogent defence of his crazy ideas about journalism and the abandonment of journalistic integrity, balance and fairness. But Greg Treadwell, who was sitting there uh, in a public institution, um, chose not to. Chose not to. So that is the brave new world of journalism. You do not have to be balanced. And young people are being taught they do not have to be balanced as journalists. You do not have to offer the other side a right of reply. As I have just shown you, I bent over backwards to try and give Greg Treadwell a chance to put his views or explain the craziness of his column that seeks to undermine the very principles and fundamentals of freedom of speech by supporting that rubbish, publicly funded Fire and Fury documentary. So, Greg Treble, the invitation remains open. I don't think you're a proto-fascist who is going to infect democracy. I just don't think you're the sharpest knife in the drawer or, to be frank, much of a journalist. But you had your chance, and I'd still give you a chance, because that's what dialogue and debate in an open democracy that values freedom of speech is all about. And Greg, I guess the problem for you, mate, is you can't take me to the Media Council and you can't take me to the Broadcasting Standards Authority. But what I would encourage you to do is stand your ground and come up with a cogent argument to support what I believe, in my opinion, are your very, very poor views. And it is also my opinion that you are entirely the wrong sort of person to be teaching young people about journalism entirely the wrong sort of person. And I'm going to tell you, there were a couple of people in the office who read that column, young people, and just shook their heads. And they were, in fact, more outraged than I was at your silly, silly views.